Okay, this video is about the extreme value theorem, and this is for our um, business calculus class, section 6.1. Okay, so this one is when we want to find the absolute highest and the absolute lowest. When can you use this? You can apply this theorem when you have a continuous function and it's on a closed interval. So, if you have some continuous function and we close it off between two values, A and B, a closed interval, we are guaranteed that somewhere on this interval, either at an endpoint, like here at A or B, or at some critical value where the uh, first derivative is equal to zero, the slope is zero, or is undefined, those are critical value points, either at the endpoint or a critical value, that's where the maxes and mins will occur and we're guaranteed to have an absolute max and an absolute min. So for this theorem, and this is kind of um, to itself, you um, to apply it, you take the first derivative, the derivative, you set it equal to zero and you solve for those values. These are called the critical values. Then you plug the critical values as well as the endpoints into the original function and the highest one is the absolute max, and the lowest one is the absolute min. So on your upcoming test, I'm going to use the words, find the absolute max and the absolute min using the extreme value theorem. So you'll know that's when you use this right here. So the first one on your worksheet <clears throat> says, to find the absolute max, find the absolute extrema, which means the absolute max and the absolute min, um, if they exist, um, and where they occur for this function. So this is the function, and I changed the original one on your worksheet. So um, if it's not already changed, please change it to number 24. F of x is x over x squared plus 2, but on the closed interval from 0 to 4. So if we're doing this one, we want to first take the first derivative, which requires low e high, low x squared plus 2, Derivative of high minus high, derivative of low, which would be 2x over low, low, x squared plus 2, quantity squared. So then we simplify this. 1 times x squared plus 2 is x squared plus 2, minus 2x squared, when I multiply that together, over x squared plus 2 squared, which is negative x squared plus 2 over x squared plus 2 squared. Okay, to find the critical values, you set the numerator equal to zero, negative x squared plus two is zero, or the denominator equal to zero and solve, because this is where it's, the first derivative would be undefined, and this is where it would equal zero when you set the numerator equal to zero. Look at the denominator, x squared plus two. When we set that equal to zero, we're gonna get that x squared is equal to negative two, and when we take that square root, we will get imaginary numbers. That is not what we're interested in because that's out of our domain of real numbers. So disregard that one. In the numerator, when we set it equal to zero, we get x squared is equal to two. So x will equal to plus or minus the square root of two. And we're looking at the interval between zero and four. Only one of these, when x is equal to the square root of two, is on this interval. So we're going to consider this to be a critical value. We disregard the negative square root of 2. So now we're to the place where we plug these into the original. So we say, what is f of the square root of 2 equal to? What is f of 0 equal to? And what is f of 4 equal to? Well, I already did this just to save time. I'm going to tell you what I got. I got that when f of 0, it's 0. I'm plugging it into the original. When f is equal to the square root of 2, when I plug that in, I get 0 0.35. And when f is equal to 4, I get 0 0.22. Then I just look at these and say, okay, who is the highest? Well, 0.35 is the highest. And so this is the absolute max. So the wording of this would say the absolute max is, has a value of 0.35, and it occurs when x is equal to the square root of 2. And the lowest point that we see here is 0, and so we would say the absolute min has a
has a value of zero, I'm looking at this zero, and it occurs when x is equal to zero, and I'm looking at that zero. So that's the first one on your worksheet, and it's kind of just a, a math problem, not an application. But now we're going to use an application for the rest of these. So let's look at the second one there, which is about um, salmon. The, um, the number of salmon swimming upstream is to spawn is approximated by this equation right here. Okay. And they're looking at uh, where T represents the temperature of the water in degrees Celsius. Find the water temperature that produces the absolute maximum number of salmon swimming upstream. And so they gave us a closed interval of the temperatures between six degrees Celsius and 20 degrees Celsius because they gave us this little greater than or less than right here. So they said six. This is our closed interval, six to 20. And this is uh, temperatures that we're looking at here. Okay, and now we're gonna look at the formula how many salmon are swimming upstream at various temperatures? Negative T cubed plus 3T squared plus 360T plus 5,000. So when I read this problem, it says um, find the water temperature that produces the maximum absolute, the absolute maximum number of salmon swimming upstream. I'm going to add the word absolute so you'll be clear that we're looking for the absolute. And we're going to apply this same theorem because it's a closed interval and this is a continuous function. So what do we do? We find the critical values. How do we do that? We take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and solve for x, except for we have t this time instead of x. So s prime of t would be negative 3t squared plus 6t plus 360. We're going to set this equal to zero and solve. Um, I can factor out a negative 3, which gives me t squared minus 2t minus 120. This is factorable. Um, I found factors of negative 12 and positive 10, and I was able to factor this into t, let's see, minus 12t plus 10, let's see, t squared minus 2t minus 120. So we get a critical value of 12 degrees and a critical value of negative 10 degrees. Remember, these are degrees Celsius. And we look at the interval we're interested in, and it's between 6 and 20. Well, negative 10 is not on that um, in, in between 6 and 20, so we just don't even consider him. So now we test all of our endpoints. We say, okay, what, how many salmon are swimming upstream when the temperature is 6 degrees? How many are swimming upstream when the temperature is 20 degrees? How many are swimming upstream at this critical value of 12? So these were the endpoints and this is the critical value. We test these all. And so I, you plug these into the original up here. And I already did that. Um, and you can do that on your own to make sure that you get the right numbers. But when I plugged in um, S of six, I got 7,016. Oh, no, no. I put the wrong one. S of 6 was 7,016. And when I plugged in S20, I got 5,400. And when I plugged in S of 12, I got 8,024. So to answer this question, um, find the water temperature that produces the maximum number of salmon swimming upstream. The max is 8,024, and it occurs when the temperature is 12 degrees Celsius. So that's our second example using the extreme value theorem. All right, here, let's do an average cost one. It says find the, and I'm, I'm gonna insert the word absolute so you'll know we're using the extreme value theorem. So the absolute minimum value of the average cost for the given cost function on the given interval. So for this is what this one looks like and I lost my little eraser. Oh no, oh yes, yeah. so this one looks like, dun, dun, dun. All right. 
um, the average cost function is C of X. No, this is just the cost function. The cost function for C of X is equal to 81 X squared plus 17 X plus 324. This is the cost function. But the average cost is C of X with a bar on top. That's how you symbolize it. And it's equal to the cost function divided by X. So that's 81x squared plus 17x plus 324 divided by x. So what are they asking us? They are asking us to find the minimum value of the average cost for the given function on the given interval. So if we need to find a minimum for the average cost, which is this, we're going to take the derivative of c bar of x. So c of x his derivative calls for a quotient rule. Let's do that. Low, d high, 81 times two is 162x plus 17, low d high, minus high, 81x squared plus 17x plus 324, derivative of low is one over low low, x squared. So we simplify the numerator and get 162x squared plus 17x minus 81x squared minus 17x minus 324 all over x squared. And if I say 162 minus 81 and x squared, I get 81x squared, 17x minus 17x is 0 minus 324 over x squared. Okay. Critical values come from where the derivative equals zero or is undefined. It will equal zero when the numerator is equal to zero or 81x squared minus 324 equals to zero. It will be undefined when the denominator x squared equals to zero. Well, if I set x squared equal to zero and solve, I'll get x is zero. But if you look at part A, the interval for part A is from one to 10 and zero is not on that interval. So I'm not gonna worry about the critical value that I get from there. I'm gonna figure out what this critical value is though. 81 X squared equals 324 when I add them to the other side. If I divide both sides by 81, then I get four. X squared is equal to four. So I take the square root, I get X is equal to plus or minus the square root of four plus or minus two. 2 is on this interval, so 2 is a critical value I need to consider. x is negative 2 is not on my interval, so I don't worry about him. So, so for part A, the closed interval is 1 to 10, so I need to evaluate the average cost at the endpoints at 1, at 10, and at my critical value of 2. So I plug this into this, this function right here, the average cost. And when I did that, I got that C bar of 1 was 422, C bar of 10 was 859.4, and C bar of two was 341. So the question is, um, find the absolute minimum on this interval. Well, the absolute minimum, 341 is the lowest. So the absolute minimum average cost is 341. And it occurs um, when X is equal to two. Now, part B, let's just look at that real quick. Part B. They want us to look at the same question for values between 10 and 20. Okay, we would do the same thing. We would find the average cost, we found it. We would take his derivative, we did it. We would find the critical values on this interval. It's only, there's no critical values on this interval. Two is not on this interval. So how would we find the absolute max and absolute min, or absolute min is all we're interested in, we would find C of 10 bar and C of 20 bar 
and say who is the lowest because there were no critical values for part B because none of them were on this interval. C bar of 10 is the same thing it was before, 859.4. And C bar of 20, when you plug that in, you get 1,653.4, and the lowest is this. So on this interval, the cost is the lowest when X is 10. Okay, the average cost, I should say. All right, now the last one, and then we'll be done with this video. Gasoline mileage. From information given in a recent business publication, we constructed the mathematical model, M of S is equal to all of this stuff, to represent the mile per gallon used by a certain car at a speed of S miles per hour. Find the absolute maximum miles per gallon and the absolute minimum miles per ga gallon and the speed at which they occur. So, this, we will use the last extreme value example we're doing today for this. And so, the function that they gave us is um, M of S, and they said M represents the miles per gallon used by a car. Okay, so we have M of S. M of S is equal to negative 1 over 45 S squared plus 2s minus 20. The closed interval is between speeds of 30 and 65. So these are speeds in miles per hour. M of s is the mileage in um, in um, I'm gonna try to say miles per gallon. Is that right? Wait, wait. Miles per hour. Mph miles per gallon. So this is like how many miles we're getting um, per gallon when we're going at various speeds. This is what it tells us. So, how do we find the absolute max and the absolute min of this? We take the derivative. We set it equal to zero. We solve for s. Those are our critical values. Then we plug in the critical values as well as the endpoints. The highest one's the absolute max. The lowest one's the absolute min. So, here we go. M prime of s is equal to negative 2 over 45 as to the first plus 2. We set this equal to 0 and solve. So I'm going to subtract 2 to the other side. Um, you can multiply both sides by 45 and then divide by negative 2 or you could, okay first let me get rid of the negative. A negative divided by a negative, divided by both sides by negative one, what's gonna happen is these are gonna turn positive. So first, that's the first thing I'm gonna do. And I'm a little bit lazy, so I'm not gonna rewrite it. This is what we have. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal. So I have 45 over two, if I multiply that on this side, 45 over two, and if I wanna put this over two, I can do that. What's gonna happen here is this is gonna give me a one, I'm going to get a 1 over 1, which is just a 1 times s. Over here, these 2s will divide out, and I just am left with 45. So this is my only critical value, and it is on that range, so I need to test it. How do I test it? Well, I plug it in the original. m of 30, m of 45, m of 60. We plugged all of these in. And I already did this, and when I did that, I got that m of 30 is equal to 20. So what does this mean? When you're traveling 30 miles per hour, you are getting 20 miles to the gallon. M of 45 is equal to 25. When you're traveling at 45 miles per hour, you're averaging 25 miles per gallon. And at six, oh, oh it's supposed to be 60 or 65, sorry. Oh, I wrote uh, 65, I don't know why I wrote 60, 65. At 65, we get 16.11. So when you're traveling at 65 miles per hour, your efficiency is not as good. You're averaging 16.11, or one, I'd say, um, miles per gallon. So what's the highest? You're the highest. What's the lowest? You're the lowest. So if we wanted to write a sentence, we could say there is a, you get um, the absolute max is 25 
miles per gallon when you're traveling forty five miles per hour. All right. So when is the absolute min? The absolute min is 16.1 miles per gallon when traveling 65 miles per hour. And so those are a few examples of the extreme value theorem and you will know when to use them because it will say use the extreme value theorem and there'll be words like absolute max and absolute men.